I'm here in the premises of Electrogenic in Oxford, one of the UK's premier electric classic conversion companies. They take an old car and they electrify it to give it a new lease of life. We're going to be given a tour of the factory, we're going to talk to the owners and founder Steve Drummond. We're going to be given a, a demo of a couple of their cars, a Porsche 356 and a Mini, classic, fantastic looking cars. Um, and we, if we hope you enjoy this video and if you do, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know, we set out to convert classic cars and then we set out to um, and then when we were doing that, we started to develop our own tech and then, and now the tech development is, is really coming along and, and, and bringing us into new, new markets as well as classic cars. Um, and what we've seen over the last couple of years with the classic cars is that um, we really started off with uh, individuals who were perhaps in their 50s and 60s, had had a car in the family for a long time, um, car needed a new lease of life, they're conscious about the environment, um, also not necessarily wanting to carry on having to do the maintenance with the old car, because that's a significant part of owning a classic car. And so thinking, wow, conversion is a good idea. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Electrogenics, um, one of our first creations. Uh, it's a 1963 VW Beetle. Uh, it's where we sort of started our platform of, of tech, but this is a, uh, a Hyper 9 onto the original gearbox. Uh, we've actually reduced the gearbox down to just third and fourth. So nice easy drive, third is around town, fourth is on the motorway. Um, we've then got seven Tesla cells, um, so we've got a, a total of sort of 37 kilowatt hours. Um, so for this car, tried and tested 150 miles range. So we've got the, the Hyper 9, um, we've got our custom uh, 3D printed products, um, so nice and safe. Uh, the original gearbox, so a custom adapter. And then we've got our bespoke charging system either side, um, so these here. Um, so this car is actually running 15 kilowatt charging output, um, so it can charge at a full rate of 15 kilowatts. Probably the biggest new group of people is people in the 30s and 40s have a little bit of money very often live in London and uh, want to get an electric car, um, have always wanted a classic car, but don't have the time or, or the skills to keep it on the road. And so now they're saying, wow, you know, I can get this electric car, which isn't boring. I always wanted a classic. What classic shall I buy? So we have conversations with people about what, what uh, car to buy and then, then convert it. But also then the more um, practical things, you know, you're aware we're, we've do, done a large... Um, uh, research project with Worthy Farm down in Somerset um, to develop a low cost solution for converting agricultural Land Rovers to electric, which has been very successful. So the Land Rover Defender is a very popular sort of British icon. Um, so this is one of the first cars that we're producing a kit for. Um, this has been in partnership with Innovate UK and Cardiff University. Um, so it gives us the data that's required to understand how useful uh, this as a product will be and what the payback is in terms of um, sort of the conversion cost to paying for itself. So it's a four year payback. Um, the kit is around pricing sort of £25,000. You drop it in, it's four year payback. And uh, then you, after that, you still have another 50 years of or 200,000 miles of happy motoring uh, before you have to change anything. So this is a, a farming solution, it's a, a cheap, budget friendly, um, so we've got uh, a Hyper 9 straight onto the original gearbox, uh, control systems and a 50 kilowatt uh, battery pack. So everything goes in the front, nice and simple drop-in solution. You literally unbolt the engine, uh, you remove the fuel tank, uh, the, uh, the exhaust and the engine and you just bolt in the kit and uh, away you drive. Which allows you to do 150 miles um, on road, uh, sort of country lanes, 50 mile an hour, um, and then on off-road capabilities, towing trailers, you're looking at a lot more because of just slower speeds. Um, but we've had this vehicle on Worthy Farm, who hosts Glastonbury, um, for about 18 months now. It's designed down to a price, it's designed to be um, a good economic pr proposition to, to change, uh, to, to convert the vehicle. And so 
low voltage, lower um, torque motor. So it's a motor which is actually almost exactly mimics the power and torque of the original diesel engine. We've had it on 30% inclines, declines, uh, it's got hill descent. What we're all about is we're, by, we're about making cars that people want to drive. That's really the point. And the reality of classic car ownership is it, it all sounds very romantic, but the reality is not so romantic because they're mm. difficult to keep going. Uh, they're unreliable. And, uh, you know, it's usually the only the enthusiastic member of the family can actually start them in the first place. And uh, so what we do is we take away all of that hassle. 356, so 1964 original matching numbers, engine and chassis, completely restored. This is how it came to us. Um, but this is now an electric classic. Um, so the single Hyper 9 off uh, the original gearbox, so it's a four-speed manual still. You get to change gear, you get that in driver engagement, that character of the original car. Um, it's got 160 miles range, tried and tested, um, and it will recharge in about eight hours because it's got a seven and a half kilowatt charger. Interior-wise, it's exactly the same. Um, we've repurposed the dials, so the fuel gauge is now state of charge. The rev ca counter actually shows shows you what the motor is doing, um, so you can rev match gears if needed, um, but it just gives you an indication um, and it also just keeps the interior as, as classic as possible. So yeah, the back of a 356, um, similar platforms in Beatles and Carmen gears, but we've got the motor, our custom CNC adapter uh, that goes onto the original gearbox bell housing. We've got the controller and an inverter that runs the Hyper 9. A cooling system um, and then uh, various DC DCs to control the 12 volts or in this case uh, 12 volt uh, 6 volt systems uh, for lights uh, and such. I really like the Porsche 356 it's just really nice to, I've driven it quite a lot of miles between shows on country roads and it's really nice to drive it, it's that's a, that's a really nice one. No power steering on this car. So this is a 1964 356 that I'm driving here. It's got a Hyperline motor in it. So it's 110 horsepower and 235 newton meters of torque. The steering is very, very unusual from a modern car perspective. It, you need to really turn the wheel quite a lot more in this car than a modern cars I'm used to. Very big steering wheel as well. So this car has been converted with a gearbox. I'm currently driving it in third. So um, um, you can just drive it around in third if you like. You can probably also hear that it's um, quite noisy in here because these cars obviously we didn't have a lot of um, insulation. Um, regeneration of this car is set up so that it doesn't actually regenerate just automatically. I have to put my foot on the brake to get it to regenerate. So it's got 150 miles of range, original dials. Yes, yeah, so this car probably has almost twice as much, um, much power as it did originally. If, you put, if I put my foot down on this straight, it's got a little bit of punch, but it's only in third gear. So, um, uh, you know, that means it's a lot smoother delivery of power. So this is a very, somewhat, very much a classic car driving experience. You would have to get used to it. But if you like that kind of experience, if you want to have a sense of um, driving a car that is from the mid 1960s, then it gives you that. But without the hassle of having to worry about will it start in the morning uh, at all? and will it break down and need to be taken to be fixed? So it looks absolutely stunning from the outside. Um, so this is a, a Mini Cooper. Um, it's got a single Hyper 9, but now with a five-speed manual gearbox from a Citroen C1. So this is a more modern gearbox from about 2008, runs to 2012. Um, so it's modernizing the car and it has a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack so in terms of town city driving, we're looking at about an 80 mile range. But this one's actually quite special. It's for a company in London called Small Car Big City. Uh, they run a tourism company. Uh, it's a uh, car for hire. It takes you around the sites, lets you see London um, in a classic Mini. Um, so they have a fleet of eight or ten. They'll do uh, trips with two or three cars at a time lets you see the sights. So we've got the back of the Mini here, uh, currently on charge, uh, waiting for us to, to get going. But 
We haven't compromised on boot space. Um, there is a battery pack in the back here, but it's still perfectly usable for a weekly shop. Um, and we do have a small car, big city Easter egg, uh, a couple of gold bars lying around uh, from their recent bank heist. So like the, like the Porsche I was just driving, this car has a conventional gearbox. So I have to put my foot on the clutch and put it in first um, and take my foot off and might maybe Yep, and off it goes. Now, in some ways, this car feels actually a bit more sprightly than the other car, but that's because it was in first and the other car was in third. So this isn't quite such an old car. This is a 1980, kind of 1990 era Mini. Uh, it's set up more for city driving. And Minis typically also feel a lot faster than they actually are because they're so low to the ground and there's little tiny wheels. So this car has the same motor as the Porsche I was just driving, um, but it's actually tuned uh, to a, a, a spec for uh, London Transport because of the way it's going to be um, used in, uh, as we explained earlier, as a, a city hire car and for tours. So I'm gonna to change gear up for a second. That was a bit weird. If you're used to driving electric cars, the idea of changing gears is very odd to be doing again. So this car, one of the reasons why I wasn't changing gear in the other car is because that had an original 1960s Porsche gearbox, which can be a bit of a pig. This one has a, um, a 2008-2009 Citroen C1 gearbox, much more modern car, um, and you can certainly feel it, it just changes like an ordinary car. I'm now in second. Second seems like quite a nice gear to be driving around in. So this car will probably do 45.50 in second, which is more than enough. So basically you could start off um, and just completely drive in second if you wanted to. But having that first means you can really burn people off the lights if you want to, which they probably wouldn't be expecting from a little old car like no. this. So both these cars have a real sense of occasion about driving them. Another point, unlike the Porsche I was just driving, this car has lift off regen. You can probably maybe just give us get a sense that it's slowing down when I take my foot off the accelerator. I'm doing that now it's starting to slow down. And that's because it's set up for city use. That's something you want in city use. You won't be able to do any kind of one pedal driving with this car, but having it kind of slow down in traffic is useful. So you won't actually have to hit the brake so often as you drive about in a city with start stop traffic. This car only has a 22 kilowatt hour battery. Um, it'll do about 80 miles around town, which is very similar to something like um, the uh, electric version of the, the Smart. The Smart is a cool car, but this is even cooler. So would you be able to rob a bank and get away with it in this car? Yeah, probably. Certainly you'd be able to get away with uh, not being uh, charged, congestion charge. So yeah, this is just a Mini, and we love the fact that it's got this, uh, this, uh, this uh, it's even real, but this veneer interior, all wood, it just feels um, it's like your, your, your grandmother's sideboard in here. Your granny would love it. So this really is a perfect little city car that you just look forward to getting into and going down the shops in. I haven't driven a single car that I haven't thought, you know, this is going to be much better electric. And it is because, you know, they're always less fussy in the gears. There's more power, more torque. So it's much easier to drive, much smoother. It's more accessible. Um, it's just an improvement. So that's Electrogenic. They're doing sterling work, taking old cars and giving them much longer lifespan and making them much more drivable in the modern era. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.